Welcome back to the channel guys. Uh, I'm gonna show you how you can actually create some easy pipelines within the bit bucket. So the pipelines are actually there to automize the whole process. And what do I mean by this? Is to actually have a continuous integration and continuous development. This is what CICD actually stands for. Now, how do the pipelines actually work? Well, pipelines will work based on the branches, if you, of course, define the branches themselves. But the pipeline will have what is called the Bitbucket Pipelines.yaml file. And within this YAML file, you're actually defining what your pipeline is going to do, actually. But before you actually move on, you need to go to repository settings. And within the repository settings, you need to scroll all the way down. When you see the pipelines, you go to settings and you need to make sure that this toggle is actually on. If it's not on, it needs to be on. Okay, let's go to the pipelines right now. And when you are creating your pipelines for the very first time, you're going to be asked to either start from like the starter template, which is something that I would recommend. And then you can change it and you can adjust it based on the needs that you actually have, either to deploy, let's say a Node.js application, Python application to uh, deploy something on the AWS uh, S3 storage or something like that. Doesn't matter. So, when you actually go within the uh, pipeline, it's doing something that is called a build. In here, you're going, you're going to see the status of your pipelines as well. And from here, these right here are like, well, they're, they are indeed the part of the step because this part right here, this is like a one step within the pipeline. So I'm going to show you how this Bitbucket pipe, uh, pipelines.yaml looks like. As you can see, th this is the structure of this pipeline. Now, currently, we are within this branch right here that previously I have created when I made a commit to using the Jira issue key. And then, so I can actually show that commit within my Jira issue. Now, if we go with the edit option right here, we'll be able to modify this YAML file. So that's what we're going to do. And we're gonna be using a simple, we're gonna be using a simple uh, starter pipeline. Yeah, your very own first pipeline in here. And there's some things that we're gonna go through. All right, so. Let us delete some of the things in here. Let's start with the basics. So the very first part that we have and the, each pipeline that starts, it starts with its own image. Now the uh, image that is actually being used is if you go within the different templates in here, you might actually see the images are kind of different in terms of if it's Node.js, then the node is going, uh, then the image is going to be the node, and then it's going to be the version of that node, node that is going to be used within this specific image. But for now, we're going to be sticking to the Atlassian default image. Okay, after that, we have this 
pipelines uh, step where we are defining the start of our pipeline then the fault actually comes next what is really important within the YAML structure is that indentation is a huge huge part when you're creating your own pipelines because YAML is really sensitive on this kind of topic so after the default you have the definition of the parallel and in here within the step this is what happens so within the step and it's having the name build and test so what actually this is this is if we go back to our pipelines and if I go for deploy to the production as you can see this is called build and test all right so as you can see it's really it's something that um, is already being shown okay we can name it differently for example I can say something like uh, pre preparation uh, then what you can actually have in here let me explain these these parts here services so there are like different services that you can actually call within the YAML and you can define most a lot of them so one of those services that you can actually call in here is docker that you can actually use which is basically the software that is be, being used in order to make the containers out of out of your code this is uh, the part of the uh, DevOps DevOps process now after that you have this option where it says actually script this is where everything happens so you can define a lot of things in here within the script if you just wanna print some of the text in here then you're going to use the dash and you're going to use the echo and then you're going to type your message right here but also you can do some of the other stuff for example you can use the docker version and when you're using the docker version it's gonna print out the version of the docker that is actually being used mostly that is going to be the latest the latest docker version then you also have this command that says docker run hello world so what is it going to do is and when you actually do this from your terminal of course uh, with the prerequisite that you have docker installed is that definitely it's going to run the uh, it's going to run the docker service and it's going to tell you like hello from docker and the last but not least is this deployment option where you're basically specifying and saying that when you're doing some of the um, changes within the code when actually something needs to be done automatically it will be deployed on the production now this is something that is optional you actually don't need to use this one you can use some of the other things but I was actually you know wanting to show you how it, how this actually works with docker so we can move on with that so from here you have some of the documentation in here where you can read some of this stuff where it says getting started with bitbucket pipelines uh, configure bitbucket pipelines uh, YAML set up and monitor, monitor the deployments and so on you can add more steps for example you can add like a deployment step manual step parallel step and as you can see in here is defining 
and saying that basically these are the three environments where you can actually deploy your code like the testing the staging environment and the production environment you also have the options to integrate uh, some of the uh, some of the things in here such as for example slack notification Heroku deploy uh, deploy your code to the Firebase using this uh, pipeline and so on so that is something that you can do okay that's nice another thing that I want to add in here to actually show you is I'm going to add another step in here so I'm going to be following this structure uh, this structure right here and also I'm going to whoops it seems like it's really sensitive to tabs I don't know why okay okay that was weird so we're gonna be using step and within this step I'm going to be using script and within the script itself, I'm going to do more of the in ideation. I'm going to say echo. I'm going to say hello from step two. Of course, I can go back. I can give a name to this step, which is going to do. And I'm going to say, for example, stage two. All right, great. So we don't have any errors. This is actually really good to see. And now we're going to click on commit. And it's going to ask us for the commit message. So we're going to say hello from stage two. Click on commit. Now it's saying that they're actually committing the changes. And now it's saying hello from stage two. And you're going to see these pluses in here. This That means this is what actually has been added in here but if we go within our pipelines right here we can actually see that this pipeline is actually in the progress right now so we can actually see the docker is running in here there are actually two uh, steps that I'm at that I'm doing there are no like limitations on how many steps that basically you can use okay and this is what it's doing so you can actually track the whole status of this uh, through here so this is something that is doing on the back end so from here yeah there we go and everything has been done and everything has been successful so we can actually go through each of these and it's saying echo your build goes here and this is the output that we get for the docker version we actually get the version of the docker itself we get the api version we get a lot of these a lot of the information and when we go for docker run hello world it's saying hello from docker and there's this build teardown but if you go for the stage two Within the stage two, we're only having hello from step number two. And if we go back within our pipelines, we can actually see that this pipe, the status of this pipeline was indeed successful. And this was actually the duration of it. Now, within the Bitbucket itself, when it comes to the duration of the pipelines, there are, there are some certain limitations that... Um, that are actually being defined that is being called like um, build time and this build time actually um, varies depending on the pricing model that you're currently having now of course for more building time you would actually need a higher pricing model to be well purchased so you can actually have more build times but 
since we're actually only talking about the uh, Bitbucket pipelines, this is something that um, you should actually know, and this is something uh, that, well, basically, and how this actually works. Now, if we go back to our commits in here, uh, there are some of them, so yeah, a lot. These are that happened here, but I want for this branch in here, and there we go. We have it, and it's saying hello from stage two. And I indeed have my build in here, and I can see that definitely my build has actually worked. Now, the question is, can I actually? Uh, can I see some of the Jira issues in here? Now, it's definitely giving me some Jira issues, no doubt about that. But let me see here. So I have plat 33255. 33255. 33255. That's the one. And if you go here, we're going to see that basically there's some information in here where it's basically saying the development. Now, of course, you have need to have this feature turned on, you know, actually to see all of the things that are happening here. So how many branches, how many commits, the builds that were actually being done. And I can see that there is like a build that was that was done and it was saying the latest build was updated like four minutes ago. So I can see this from the uh, Jira side as well and yeah that is everything that you need to know about the pipelines don't forget to like share subscribe to the channel see you guys in the next video bye